This is the Crit Memento build, and this build shoots fast, it shoots a long time, it it's hard as hell, it one-shots normal mobs, that's one of my favorite things about it, and it's a great secondary thing to build if you run an Icy Rain build as a main, kinda sorta, let me just show you the DPS. So before we even begin, let me show you the DPS because I know that's what you're gonna scroll through the video to look at, so let me just show you right now. And uh, this thing is wild and crazy, and this is unbuffed, this is without a Deviant Summon, this is not even with the best mods either. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now that we actually hit three times harder than this when it comes to actual mobs. So, this thing is actually pumping around 120 to 150k DPS once you ramp it up properly, but it's not something I can show on the mannequins, and I'm not buffed anyway. So real quick, let me just explain how we're actually missing DPS. So if you go to the Cradle, we're missing a lot of these damage ones. So right here, uh, because we're not defeating any units, we're missing 60% more damage. And then this one, Steady Hand, this doesn't work on mannequins for some reason. I don't know why. The only thing we're actually getting is the tactical combo when we weapon swapped and the handgun enchantment, That's uh, or enhancement. That's the only two that we're actually getting. We're not using... Um, a tactical item because a mannequin is not a great one. We're not summoning our deviation. That's another 50, 75 right there. So again, 75 plus 60 plus uh, 70 or another 60. You can see that we're missing a lot of damage. And I'll go over more in the cradle in just a bit, but also let me talk about a few other things. So we're using the wildfire, but the way the wildfire works on target dummies it, it doesn't really technically give you the full benefit of the bullseye on the target dummy. It kind of does, but it also leaves out a lot of this other stuff too. And then when we use this mod to give it an extra 8% vulnerability, this also doesn't work exactly correctly on a mannequin. I don't know why, but the math is very off when you use it against real mobs. You'll see the damage difference. Also, finally, I don't have the legendary calibration for rapid shot style, which is another 5% to fire rate. Which, uh, the way fire rate works in this game is there are break points, and when you hit the break point, you will noticeably fire faster, but if you're even 1% below that break point, you, you won't be able to hit that, um, that frame advantage. So, with the legendary, we hit 5%, and when we're stacked up with 10%, I'll talk more about that later, we are hitting that break point exactly, allowing us to shoot even faster. In testing, this thing can rock about... Uh, 10k more mannequin DPS if I just had the, the legendary rapid shot style, but I don't. Now, you're also going to be asking, well, what are better builds than what I'm showing? And, well, obviously for great ones in Prime War Farming, the Bingo Sniper has a better build. And Shrap Shrapnel, which I misspelt on the screen, I'm sorry, um, is also a better build. <laughs> And then for PvP, Jaws and Bingo are both also better, because this weapon, you have to shoot a bunch to be able to ramp up the damage. And so you're, you can one-tap players, but if they run full defensives with no uh, weak spot with that headshot modifier thing and all damage reduction, you're not going to one-tap them. All right, so let me show you the damage sampling against a Prime War boss. And uh, we're going to wait for that shield to break until we just start blasting. There we go. And uh, I got to make sure I land my shots. <laughs> not really hitting the weak point here, but that's fine. I think the head is down here. Yeah, there we go. 38,000 crit, 41,000 crit. And, uh, yeah, so we're sitting here ramping up. Now, because there's server lag, we're not getting our reloads, or we're not getting our ammo replenished as quickly. And also, I'm not using a Deviant. I have the healing Deviant on, so I brought the wrong Deviant. But you can see here, I won't get first place, especially on this server. But uh, this thing's about to split now, and <laughs> we're all slipping and sliding. The first places will still be um, <laughs> these shrapnel builds, but you can, you can see it hits pretty heckin' hard, right? All right, let's wait for the split. Still waiting on that split, and there we go, and it's already dead, so server lag there, yeah. Whoops. Anyway, oh, what is this floating above us? We can still smash into it, do a little bit of damage, why not? 12,000 on that. Again, no weak, no weak spot hits, these are just pure body shot crits. Alright, there we go. So, uh, also mobs here, and again, I didn't use my offhand at all to give vulnerability, because that would give the other players, you know, a big damage boost as well, but... Let's see how my damage did against uh, the All-Stars. We did, uh, looks like a million damage there. And uh, here's the top uh, chats. Oh, look, we, we actually hit top four there. Uh, so let's uh, look at the damage scorecard. We have, um, yeah, this is one million, all right? So this player, Rinchai, did 589,000. That's with Shrapnel. This player did 285,000. That's with Shrapnel. 
Um, so actually, yeah, I out DPSed all of them. So didn't mean to. <laughs> But yeah, there we go. One million damage with the build. As you can see, it, it hits pretty hard. And remember, that's with server lag preventing me from having more shots than I should because when the server is heavily lagging, it's not reloading my bullets properly. I'm going to talk more about how this whole build works in just a bit. I just want to make sure that I show you the damage up front because every time I look for a build video on YouTube, I just skip everything and look at the damage test before I watch the rest of the video. And I'm going to be real, the reason why that um, they didn't do, uh, do as much damage as, I, as they normally do is because I normally debuff the boss with the wildfire, so I normally debuff the boss and then it really boosts their damage. But no one was debuffing today, so I guess I win. And one thing I love about this build is that it just one-taps absolutely everything. So you can just run through silos, you can run through you know, open world landmarks, and just everything you encounter, you just insta-kill. You don't even have to do headshots or weak point hits. You just shoot... There's a few deviants that take two hits, like the really big flying ones and stuff, but uh, for any kind of boss deviants or even boss, like, Rosetta soldiers, you just debuff them with the wildfire a few, a few times, and then they go down in one to two hits anyway. It's just literally the insta-delete weapon of choice. All right, this time uh, the clan brought their debuffers, so... I'm gonna try to see if I can get this on an airborne target. And there we go. Let's go ahead and debuff it ourselves. Swap, summon Deviant, and let's just start blasting. Okay, I already got a reload there, so that's not good. And it's gonna get hit the immune phase before I can really start stacking and laying into it. So you can see this time, I'm not really, there's no way I chopped it. <laughs> I'm also on fire myself. There's no way I chop, I chop, top. The DPS ch uh, charts this time, but I can still shoot the, the henchman minions, make sure I mark them so I get that buff. And then wait for the split again on this one. And uh, still waiting on that split. But yeah, the, there's too many players, and uh, there's the split. Go ahead and shoot this one right here. And you can see that, uh, again, I got caught in another reload due to server lag. So the more players there are, uh, <laughs> it's not as efficient. But you could, if you have uh, the cannons and the bio missiles, you could totally solo one of the lower level prime war enemies with this. But let's check my damage this time. There's no like 226,000. You can see that uh, this this build is really not meant uh, for for killing or for topping the charts on prime bosses. But th if there's only a few people, like I like you saw earlier, it gives you time to ramp that damage up and basically double your damage versus everyone else. You can see here. Uh, 458k there, 298k there, um, looks like no millionaires in this one, so we're, we're up there on damage, we're just not top 4. And if you're wondering about the Asian name, it's to avoid clannies from being able to mass report me, that's the only reason I'm using it. Also, I finally did find a rapid shot style, but I'm gonna talk more about calibrations a bit, but you do want the double crit rate. So here is the gear that is needed, and how much it costs, and what it does. So, the Memento... What it does is that it triggers Fast Gunner, and Fast Gunner, well, we can stack it up to 10 times, more on that later, but each stack is 1% attack damage and 1% attack speed, but for our build, it'll be giving us 2% attack speed, which, or fire rate, as it's called in the game, and uh, whenever Fast Gunner is triggered, you reload one bullet, and we, re we get Fast Gunner 70... 2% uh, of the time when we hit a weak spot, otherwise 36% for body shots. It's still plenty. Now, whenever you do land a hit, you have a 40% chance to consume one extra bullet. It does not shoot two bullets. It still only shoots one bullet, but that one bullet will hit for an extra 80% damage. So, I wish this part of the... If you could just strike this out of the gun, it would be like the best gun in the game. The DPS would be insane. But uh, it does eat two bullets and only for 180% effective damage. So that's kind of its downside. Next up we have the Wildfire. And this gives Bullseye 60% of the time when you hit a target. Though it can, it can spread 80% of the time to a second target. But if there is no target to spread it to, you now deal 25% bonus damage to that target. And this does work on when you weapon swap. It still works when you weapon swap. It does not work on uh, mannequins. I don't know why. Mannequins are weird. Uh, also, when you hit a weak spot of a marked enemy, you attack 3% more damage, stacks up to 3 times for 10 seconds. So, what you do, or what I do, let me hide the screen real quick. 
is when I'm fighting mobs, I will start with the wildfire. This is the blue gun, right? This is the wildfire. The yellow one is our memento. That's what the build's all about. But we start with the wildfire, and I just shoot three shots into the target. So boom, 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 and then I swap, and then I start wailing on them. Now, sometimes in those three shots, I still haven't bullseyed the enemy target. But um, by the time it takes for my brain, it's about 250 milliseconds because I'm older. Uh, for me to look at their debuff status and then swap, it's just not worth the, the brain processing power. So, I just shoot three shots with the wildfire, weapon swap to memento, and shoot until I reload like a few times. By then, the debuff has ran out. But by then, anything I'm shooting is guaranteed dead anyway. Alright, next up is uh, One Piece Bastille. You can pick whatever piece you want, but I picked the helmet because I think the helmet looks way better. And this just gives you 10% weapon damage. That's all it does, 10% weapon damage. The Desert Dust Mask, this thing costs 8,000. But what it does is when you trigger Fast Gunner, there's a 50% chance to automatically reload one bullet. So you're reloading one bullet when you trigger Fast Gunner, and then you have a 50% chance to reload two bullets. This is how we maintain our ammo. So I have nine shots, eight back to nine, eight, seven, six, because I, I it double shot. Five, four to five, four to five, four, three to four, three, two, back to four. So I just reloaded twice there. Three, two, one to two, one to two, one to two, and then it double shot there. So um, let's try it. Let's shoot it faster now. You can see that sometimes you can go for a long time. And you can see I'm still maintaining nine ammo here. Still maintaining nine ammo. You can see it goes on for a long time. Without this helmet, you can't do this. If you take this helmet off and put anything else on, I'll just put on a dust mask, whatever. Watch, it. you cannot maintain your stacks. So you just run out. You always run out. So it is a huge, huge, huge DPS boost to use this as your key item. All right. Next up, uh, we have four-piece lone wolf. What does this do? Magazine capacity, super important. Crit rate, super important. Uh, whenever you, uh, crit, you get more crit damage. It stacks up to eight times, but now it can stack up to ten times with four pieces. And when you do reload, which you in eventually will have to reload, sadly, you get 8% bonus crit for two seconds. So, uh, you could go without the four piece, but I like stacking Lone Shadow to ten. I like the bonus crit rate. I think it's just easier to have the four piece set, in, in my personal opinion. And you may be thinking, but reload speed, if you want two-piece Bastille, you would have reload speed. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, with 250% reload speed, your 2.5 second reload timer becomes a 1 second reload timer. It's not that good. 20% reload speed is jack crap, it is garbage, it is a useless secondary perk. And because someone in the comments is going to ask, I just use a stun baton, a tier 1 stun baton. I don't ever melee anymore in this game. Melee builds suck. There is no really good melee builds. And this is just used to activate one of the um, the silos, like little bonus rooms. That's it. Oh, and by the way, every single piece of gear is from the wish machine. So there you go. You don't have to go out and find blueprints anywhere. Now, this is what I use for the accessories. I'll tell you where I get each one. So first up is the muzzle, the small compensator. So here at the Tallgrass Inn, this is the tier four zone, you travel northwest uh, to this little furnace layer area. And right in the corner of the furnace layer, right here, there is a rock that you blow up with a C4 explosive. I tried grenades, grenades didn't work. Just use a C4, you blow up a rock and there it is. For the Compact Reflex site, you go to Severin7, this guy right here. He is in every town also, nice barcode head <laughs> uh, tattoo there. Anyway, he's in every town, you just talk to him, and uh, you just buy it for 80 stellar, stellar planulas, whatever that is. So apparently a planula is a larvae thingy, I don't know. Now, the small infrared indicator is actually a weekly you can do, and it's all the way down at the south of the map in the first zone of the game and it's uh so here here is the myers market go go south and then west and where these two dirt roads converge right here there is a little mini game you can play that uh, you get to shoot floating signposts in the ocean and if you get a high score you unlock the small infrared indicator you should do that every week anyway for the controllers 
Now, to get the extended pistol mag for your wildfire, in the upper Black Heart region, you'll see this little satellite dish area, and then northeast of that is a teleport tower. You're going to take the teleport tower, and then you're going to travel east, and there's like a little dark area on the map right here, and it's going to look like this, and there's a little puzzle there. Sometimes there's a space tuner. It looks like there's one right now. You talk to the scarecrow, and you go through the blue door, and that's all you got to do. It's real simple. And I would show you, but I think it's copyrighted, uh, the music. Oh, well, I guess when I turn the copyrighted music off, it doesn't play. There are a few parts in this game where the copyrighted music option, when you have that toggled, it still plays the music anyway. And it still flags my videos. For calibrations, use a rapid shot style with crit rate and crit rate. And uh, right now, I'm just using a purple one because I didn't have the legendary, so it's only a fire rate of 20%. But it gives you that magazine capacity, which for the memento, it's not much. But hey, every point counts. Every extra bullet you get absolutely helps. Now, with rapid style on your secondary, your wildfire, you still shoot heckin' fast. Check this out. So you're already shooting very rapidly. Look at our DPS. It's in the 22Ks. That's really nice. But if you have fast gunner stacked to 10, so let's stack fast gunner to 10 real quick. There we go. Now look how fast this shoots. Man, we are popping. It almost doubles our DPS, if you can imagine. Almost, not quite. It's about 15k more-ish, sort of, kind of. So remember, your rotation is you start with a wildfire, you pop three shots, doesn't have to be headshots, and then you shoot uh, basically everything around it. So, And then you just go wild and crazy. And uh, yeah, like I said, remember, bullseye doesn't exactly work correctly on the mannequins anyway, but this, this is how you do it. It's, it's a very high action per minute playstyle. And one of my favorite things about running double pistols is you just need to carry one ammo type. Even though I do have swaps myself, so I carry a submachine gun as well. But uh, ammo pistol bullets are so dang, you know, economical. Like, if I craft uh, 1,200 bullets here and then I have the 50% bonus, uh, essentially that lasts me like all day. Dude, that, uh, that, uh, area gave me a 5-5 five, five space turner. I've never had a 5-5 five, five anything before in this game. Isn't it pretty? But, of course, it's lazy! Minus 10% crafting speed. Not that I really care. I don't have friends that use this thing on anyway. Also, a great thing about the pistols is their durability lowers very, very slowly. These things, again, it, they last all day before you need to repair them. So, here is the cradles. Now, this is for novice servers, alright? And if you want to know, can you update this build guide for the normal and hard mode servers, bro? If you've played through Novice, I think that you can figure out now in your, in your brain to mouse over the tooltip and read what it does and pick all the ones that have to do with fast gunner and bullseye and weapon damage with pistols. I think you can figure it out from here, guys. But um, let me just show you the images, too, because someone bitched at me in one of my build guides. That I have the images covered up. whoop de doo there you go. And here's the text once again for everyone else that knows how to read. Now for mods, this is your priority. Crit damage, which is the violent modifier. Try to always get this one. You can even craft it yourself. Weapon damage, magazine capacity is huge. When you have upgraded magazine capacity, each piece of gear gives you about one extra bullet. Doesn't sound like much, but it is a massive DPS boost. And then finally, damage versus elite are great ones. I wouldn't go for damage versus normal enemies because you already one-shot them anyway. And every other mod like weak spot damage or anything like that is not that good, honestly. So let's start with each individual mod. The weapon mod of choice is Shooting Blitz. Now what this does is it gives your fast gunner buff duration an extra 4 seconds so that you don't lose your stacks when you weapon swap and re-tag enemies or when you reload. It also gives you 15% extra damage. It's really the best one, especially when paired with the mask mod I'll sh share with you in just a bit. Now on your wildfire, you're going to get Vulnerability Amplifier, and this just makes your bullseye deal an extra 8% vulnerability. It really doesn't sound like much, but this is an extra 10 to 20,000 mannequin DPS. It's insane. It's, well, not mannequin DPS because it doesn't work correctly on mannequin DPS. It's just an extra 10 to 20k DPS. It's huge, and if you do, like, like, if you're in a party with people, the meta is that everyone has wildfire and everyone runs Vulnerability Amplifier because it stacks. For the helmet, you're going with momentum up, and what this does, it gives you more fire rate the more full your weapon is, and more damage when it starts to get empty. 
This is really just the only choice for helmets, and uh, your your ammo is going to go, it's going to top off sometimes, it's going to be very low sometimes. Both are amazingly huge DPS boosts, regardless of where your ammo is at. It's just better than any other option we have. And looking at other options, there is really nothing to choose from. Fateful Strike is a DPS loss, a big one. Mag Expansion is one extra bullet. And uh, two seconds of crit rate and damage is not enough to really do any, like, big DPS jumps. It, it makes your gun dead weight while it's free firing. And um, Precise Strike can be okay. It's just not that great. And then Worker Proficiency, again, it's not like Reload Speed 10%, who gives a shit? And Elemental Damage, we don't do Elemental Damage. The Mask Bond is Blitzkrieg, and what this does, it gives you five extra Fast Gunner stacks, but every Fast Gunner stack now gives you an additional fire rate of plus one. So this means that now, instead of 10% attack speed, you now have 20% increased attack speed, which is a massive. Also, I just want to point out that Silo EX1, for whatever reason, during the patch, disappeared from the map. So it's actually right down here. If you go all the way south uh, on the map towards this big beach area, uh, and you look at this teleportation tower, and you go directly north and a bit east. It's like right here where this bridge is. It's like right here in this area. This is Silo EX1. I don't know why it disappeared from the minimap. Now, I tried some things like using Targeted Strike, which does work with our build, but it's a DPS loss compared to Blitzkrieg, so no point. For the gloves, you're going to go with Crit Boost. This is just Crit Rate plus 15%. This is much better than the other crit variable of 10% with extra damage. You want as much crit rate as possible. This is the higher DPS option for sure. On the boots, you'll be using Covered Advance, and this just gives you 20% damage when you don't take damage within 4 seconds. And if you do, well, at the end of 30 seconds, like you keep the buff for 30 seconds. And then at the end of the 30 seconds, as long as you haven't taken four damage in 4 seconds, you get the buff back. So this means just take cover, just dodge, jump around, avoid hits, and you'll eventually get the buff back very quickly. It's just basically always on, kind of, sort of. Now, I will say, if you just want to kill trash mobs and not fight bosses, Ruthless Reaper is great because it just reloads two bullets um, after you... It reloads all your bullets after you get two kills. It's really nice. I like Resist Advantage for the chest piece because this is a huge amount of damage reduction. It's... It stacks up to five times, and if you take a hit, then you lose one stack. But when you're out of combat, that's whenever you're not actively shooting, you're not taking damage. You can be in a boss fight, and as long as you run around and don't attack for a bit, then uh, you'll start getting stacks, and you can get your damage resistance back up. It's not really something you would technically do, but like sometimes just being caught reloading and not taking any hits will start stacking this back up. It's really nice. And uh, if you look at our character screen here... Uh, on our defense, we have uh, damage reduction 50%, and because we are a medium weight character, uh, we get a 10% damage reduction on torso hits. And then my gear, my bad rolls have status damage reduction, but if you build around damage reduction for PvP, then it's just a really nice mod to have, I think, in my opinion. Another great piece is rejuvenating. If you just want to, like, farm with this, you can put this on, and when you kill stuff, you'll start passively healing most of the time. I use Deadshot for the legs. Now, what happens is every time you crit, you gain 5% crit damage up to 45%. So sometimes this never stacks up during server lag. Sometimes this stays stacked up, and it's really, really nice when it does. This is a huge boost to your damage if you can get it rolling. Now, you may be thinking Bullet Siphon would be really good because every time you spend 5 bullets, you get an extra damage boost. It, it doesn't work. It, I've, I've, t I've tested this, I've done the calculations, done the math, ran the formulas, this isn't working with our weapon. I don't know why. Also, if you're just farming trash mobs, Reload Rampage is really nice too, because it refills bullets whenever you kill an enemy. So, uh, it, again, it's, it, it's nice. It's, it makes things a little more fun to play. Here's the deviants you can use. I personally use Festering Gel, just because this build doesn't really have a heal option. But uh, the Butterfly gives you bonus damage to weak spot damage, and it marks enemies with Bullseye, which increases your damage. Sadly, we have a stronger Bullseye as our offhand. Uh, the Wolf will taunt enemies and increases your weapon damage dealt. 
Uh, I don't really like the wolf much. It got nerfed recently. It's uh, it's still good, but it's just I prefer a self heal that isn't an item consumable. And then in, if you're on a PvP server, you have Mr. Wish, which uh, deals good damage. And he marks enemies with Bullseye, but again, we have a way to mark Bullseye ourselves. So it's going to take you about week three to get this build rolling out because of the Starcrom cost. But until then, all you got to do is follow this build guide. This is the best solo build. It is a free build that does not cost any Starcrom at all. It's super tanky. It infinitely shoots. It heals you. All, to find this video, you can type this into Google or YouTube rather, or click my description here. Scroll down and it's right here, builds best free build uh, for uh, to solo all content. Just click this link right here. It'll take you right to the video. And one of the coolest things about that build that I just linked you is that it uses almost all of the same mods. So you can see here I have the Icy Rain. I'm going to swap on over to that. It uses a lot of the same mods that um, our Memento build uses. Not entirely, like, uh, yeah, our helmet's a little different, uh, the mask... But we still use crit boost, we still use covered advance, we still use resist advantage, uh, and dead shot. We, well, you can use dead shot, but, um, essentially, I mean, this build is basically the same thing. Let's just, you know, unload into this, and then spray this. And we would use the polar jelly deviant here, but you can see that even with an unoptimized, um, I, I don't have the calibration for this weapon yet. There's still a lot of things I need to do, but with the calibration, I'd be pumping even more DPS and shooting forever. But without that calibration, currently, I just, uh, I, I can't crit enough to infinitely reload. But soon. Also, that memento, not the memento, I'm sorry, the wildfire pistol, you can get it at the very start of the game as soon as you leave the tutorial. Here's how to do it. Again, another video. Here's the title. Click the description. It's right down here under guides. And it's the highest DPS, you know, week one weapon you can get. Well, I did find a calibration with one crit rate and elemental damage, so my crit rate is not the highest here. Uh, 38%, I prefer 44, but whatever. And I have the polar jelly this time, so let's pop that polar jelly out. And there we go. So now, <laughs> just with this freebie build, you can see that I'm pushing 40k DPS with a 20 to 22k AOE DPS. Infinitely shooting, look at my ammo, it's not dropping one bit. And I heal 15% cons or, I'm sorry, 10% consistently. You absolutely want to use this build before you get into the Memento build for week 3. Also, just a little secret since you made it this far in the video. It's way more beneficial to run alt accounts with fetch -a -lot bunnies than it is to have a growing shack with uh, crops and growing produce. Fetch -a -lot bunnies produce way more crops, and if you have like 40 to 50 of them spread across your alts, you will be swimming in all types of food items. It's so crazy. So for food buffs, I really enjoy the assorted canned fruit, and there's a few reasons why it's mostly because I'm lazy. Now, this item gives you 25% weak spot damage, which we're not technically a weak spot build, though we should be shooting heads and weak spots anyway. But the reason why is that this thing is it's easy to find if you're out doing your loot runs, but most importantly, it there, you can get an infinite infinite amount of them if you don't even cook and here's how you're going to be using alt accounts i'm always pushing alt accounts and when this game comes out on cell phones everyone's going to be alt accounting so what you do is you invite your alts into your warband or have them make their own warband it doesn't matter have them donate to the warband and then when you go to the warband shop you can buy 10 canned fruits a week now my alt characters have no use for controllers so your main character your main account always buy out the controllers always 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 you won't be able to really afford much else anyway. Um, but uh, you have your alts to buy the assorted canned fruit, and there you go. You have infinite canned fruit at this point. Otherwise, it's like one deviated beet, which good luck finding deviated beets anywhere. You'll, you'll have to actually grow those. And like two coconuts and one aluminum, so. Then you have, I believe it's called the crumbly bread. At least when I looked it up, that's what it's called. So my source could be wrong on the name. Um, but this is 25% weapon damage. I don't have one to show you. I don't know what the recipe is because I'm too lazy to go get it, but it's 25% weapon damage. You will need deviated aloe vera though, and no thanks. I don't feel like it. Sorry. There's also the fried hot dog, which gives you 20% damage against enemies with the bullseye, but you're better off with the canned fruit that does more damage anyway, assuming you're hitting weak spot damage. That requires deviated mushrooms, any kind of meat, and two corn oils. It's really not worth it. For PvP, there's the safety sandwich, which reduces damage by 20%, but unless you're running full damage reduction, there's no point in even running some damage reduction. It's all or nothing in PvP. 
Now, there is another one, Shellfish Meat, which if you are in a group with players, you need to be running this. And this is uh, right here. It's just 5% extra vulnerability damage. This stacks with everyone in your party. If you are in a party and everyone is running this, everyone benefits from the damage boost. And you may think, well, 5% vulnerability or 25% damage? 5% vulnerability is way more than 5% damage. It is insane. You, you definitely want everyone running this. It's easy to make. It's just sell shellfish. You mine rocks near the ocean. Sugar, you just grab some beets from town. And purified water. Everyone's got purified water. I mean, you can purify it yourself. It takes like minutes. Come on now. Now, for your offhand, this counts as a drink, but um, you can do raspberry shaved ice. All this will do is give you 1.6 seconds of bonus bullseye on the enemy. It's completely pointless, but if you're some sort of min max sweat lord, here you go. There's also a uh, star gazy pie, but it requires deviated pumpkin, deviated saffron, and deviated wheat. And a bunch of it. And it's only 25% crit damage. It's such a pain in the butt to make. Probably one of the harder foods to craft. For territory defense, I recommend that you use the Icy Rain build. But if you don't want to, I would recommend that you just stay on the wildfire. And just blast all the enemies. Tag them once. Let your turrets do all the, the damage. And because you're giving them bullseye and bonus vulnerability, the turrets shred everything that you touch with your weapon. And when the boss spawns, feel free to pull out that memento and blast his butt. And you can even pre- you can pre-buff your fire rate on a mannequin before the boss spawns. So when the boss spawns, you're like fully buffed up and you're just blowing him away. Hey, if you leave a like on this video right now, you'll find extra gold next time you go mining. And this build actually works with basically any other fast gunner weapon. So we have the Netherworld. This is only 2,000 star crom. And uh, whenever you hit with all projectiles, you, there's a chance to 50% to get Fast Gunner. And then when you trigger Fast Gunner two times, the next one shot will consume one extra bullet, but it also shoots extra projectiles, so that's really neat. And then when you reload, you get a little damage buff. And so if you want to know the DPS, this is uh, kind of what it looks like here. So we'll shoot this a bunch, and then we're just going to unload into the face, get those Fast Gunner stacks uh, all stacked up. and we'll take a few tries. There we go. Now we're at 10 stacks. 44k DPS. Let's get another stack by shooting this target dummy. There we go. Swap to this one. Get debuffed. And yeah, you can just watch the damage just go up. So there we go. So <laughs> and again, that's just target dummy DPS. Now, there is also the Wrath of Hades. And this one is a free weapon. Doesn't cost any Starcrom. You can pick it up as soon as week two hits. And uh, it says that it's a 40% chance to, you know, trigger Fast Gunner when you hit a target. And that Fast Gunner refills a bullet to the secondary weapon. And that doesn't work. It, it, it simply, it just doesn't work. And then when you defeat a target, it restores one bullet, S, weird translation, from inventory to the secondary weapon, which also doesn't work. And I've tried putting the pistol in the first slot and the machine gun in the second slot. It still does not work, but... Just in case you're curious, now this thing is also fully calibrated plus 10 with the rapid shot, so it's shooting as fast as possible. Uh, this is the raw DPS, so I'm going to get real close and just, you know, blast into the head of this target dummy here. You can see that it, it's going to keep ramping up here to about 15,000 or so. I guess it really depends on RNG. And yeah, I might have missed a few shots there, but, uh, you know, I'm having to pull my mouse down. So 13k DPS there, not really the best especially, you know, for how kitted out we are. The shotgun performed way better. Now, of course, if we, uh, you know, pop four into the head on, on this guy, or more, rather, and there's server lag. Hold on, let's try that test again. This time, let's get reloaded. And uh, go ahead and pop reload on this one, too. There we go. Also, why did I only reload to 16 on that? That's weird. I, the server's being really bad right now. Weird. Okay, pop four. Let's, uh... <laughs> Look at the animation. <laughs> this is wild. But yeah, even with the debuff there, which again, doesn't fully work. We're only pushing like, what, 18k was the top one. And uh, I'm... St Man, the server is just crap in the bed here. Alright. Try shooting this one. Can we Can we at least reach 20k? Not even. Like, I, I would avoid the Hades at all costs. But hey, it's a free option. And that leaves the only other fast gunner weapon, which is the Predator Frag. This is 8,000 Starcrom. Because it's a uh, cousin, the, the um, where is it at? The Wrath of Hades doesn't do so good. 
I wouldn't recommend this one either. I know there's build guides out there that specialize around this, but um, for our build, I don't think it's going to push any better than the shotgun. So definitely, you know, you can pick up, uh, whatchamacallit, where is it at? Uh, where is it? Yeah, this one right here, the Netherworld. This one will serve you well if you want a cheaper option and don't like pistols, but again, this is a Memento build video, not a Netherworld build video. Also, if you do decide to have the multiple loadouts, kind of like I do, you also want to make sure that when uh, you're using the different weapons, you have your cradle set, so you'd want to change it uh, for your machine gun. And the way I have everything set is when I open the gear menu, I, I have the save button here, and I have all my sets here, so I can just switch to it immediately. So, like, say, oh, I, want, I feel like shotgunning. There we go. Now I have the shotgun build. If I want my icy rain build, there we go. I have the icy rain build. If I want to go back to Memento, Lone Wolf, there we go. If my armor is broken, I'm in the middle of a dungeon. Well, I can switch to Agent, uh, my Agent armor, which is not as good as Lone Wolf, but it's still passable. It's still decent. And then I have a whole Wildfire set that uses the Agent armor too. And then if you're wondering, uh, whenever I open the menu, I have this Wildfire DPS set. This one is really simple, and it's mostly free. Like, Earthly Boots is free, because it, it just deals 30% damage. And this is, I just have things like uh, Ruthless Reaper for Reload. I have uh, Reload Rampage for Reload. I have Rejuvenating for Self Heals. And all I do is, before I kill stuff, is I switch to this uh, the Sandstorm Shotgun, which gives you Fortress Warfare. A little uh, damage buff, and then I just unload into the enemy. And, uh, you know, sometimes this reaches 40k... Uh, <laughs> Mannequin DPS, but not this time, sadly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, it's just really good for mob clears if I feel lazy and don't feel like weapon swapping or having high APM, like if I'm really tired or something. Also, I just want to point out that everything that I've shown in this video thus far is just on week three. So this is just hard mode silos, hard mode, uh, you know, weapon mods and stuff. This is not pro mode. This is not Leo Labs, you know, mods. Nothing is min-max. There's almost one crap or dump stat in every single, you know, mod that I've shown thus far. You can rewind and check out the mod section once again. But yeah, uh, the, all of these builds can massively improve their damage if you really want to min-max. So yeah, that's pretty much it. But do remember that uh, mannequin DPS is not everything. That You should always go by how it feels. So, uh, obviously I can just kill the enemies with, uh, the sidearm here, but, uh, the machine gun does feel real good for taking out enemies. Let's fight a boss here, and I'm just gonna run up to the boss, peg him three times, okay, four times, and then we're just gonna machine gun him down, and look how quick he died. Like, that was, like, just a holding down left click a few seconds, I can mow down his entire party, and, uh, yeah, they're all dead. So that felt really, really good, I think it was very ammo efficient. And, uh, you know, any kind of enemies that come up, it's whatever, they just get sprayed and melted. But, like, this time with the shotgun, and I, I really don't like shotguns in this game very much. I think shotguns are kind of lame. I don't think they're as good. So, like, even though this one is marked, a body shot, two, three body shots, and that's for mid-range. But let's fight the boss real quick. Let's just go ahead and take him out. So, there we go. And then we'll just go with headshots here. And you can see that it's taking a lot longer to kill him, even though that our mannequin DPS was much higher. And yeah, if we get like real close to this guy and pop him in the head, still not dead, didn't even break his shields. Two, three shots to the head to kill this guy. We got two bullets left in the chamber. That's one at zero. So we did two shot him. But again, it just doesn't feel all that great. It's, uh, it's just, ugh. Just don't like it. And then with the memento, well, let's fight that same boss. And, uh, you know, you can be like, oh, well, it's quicker or it's slower than the machine gun. So let's... Get them tagged up there we go and then just blast and again that's without ramping up and now you know we can you, you already know that we can one shot these guys as long as we're shooting heads they're all just immediately dead so yeah we do have to aim that was not a headshot that was a non-crit body shot on that guy he lived so yeah that's one miss there we go we're doming heads now that's a regular body shot crit kill the uh the taser that's gonna fly at us there we go more and i don't know i just really like the memento for this because i can just one tap everything and like you see my health's getting a little low here well hey remember that wildfire uh, dps one we could just swap to that and uh, there we go now i can just start well let's get reloaded so now i can just you know kill these guys and start healing up uh, assuming that i'm above 60 percent that is which uh, let's go ahead and get above that 60 percent there we go so that should put us 
Yeah, but now I can just uh, start firing, and uh, you know, I'm just gonna keep constantly reloading. I don't have to ever worry about reloading, but like I said earlier in the video, I have the even better heal set, which is the Icy Rain. Like, everyone should just use Icy Rain. It's, it's really the superior build, right? Because all you have to do, like, it's brainless. You don't even have to, like, mark enemies. You just run directly at them, just spray them down, let the, let the frost kill them. Which, that guy, I guess he's gonna live. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll play it like we normally do. Let's go over to this uh, elite guy here. You know, tag him up. There we go. And then just melt him. So he's, uh, you know, doing evasive maneuvers. There we go. Server lag me means we didn't quite pop our vortexes. That guy is in perfect cover. What the hell? But he blew up. And again, those, those vortexes heal us every single time. Yes, let's sit on this grenade. Or flashbang or whatever this is. Oh, no. Oops. Now, whenever this Frost Vortex disappears, watch my HP. It'll just zip right back up. And you can... The thing is, it's not whenever one Frost Vortex disappears. When I overwrite a Frost Vortex by, you know, just slamming my bullets into multiple enemies and having multiple Vortexes just pop at once, those are all going to just mass heal me. So the, if, as long as I keep firing, I will keep spamming Vortexes and healing. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is just the ultimate build compilation, I guess. Anyway, that's the guide. I know we went a little off topic, but I wanted to give you several different options and even show you that the other options, although cheaper, are viable. It just depends on your playstyle and that you can't always trust the mannequin DPS. It, it really depends on what you prefer to do in the game. If you just want to spam Prime Wars over and over and over, the Memento will do just fine, assuming there's not... 20 sweat lords in a clan that just kill the boss before you get to ramp your damage up. As you can see, you know, we doubled the damage of a shrapnel build simply because there was plenty of boss HP remaining. So on really high HP targets, you're going to thrive with this build. But uh, on targets that go immune or have multiple phases, it's kind of annoying to have to re-ramp up your speed once again. But if you want to farm like Shadowhound, you can kill it in like 30 seconds. I know you can kill it faster with Bingo Build, but hey, everyone runs Bingo Build, so it's kind of boring to also run Bingo Build anyway. And well, if they nerf Bingo Build, haha, <laughs> to them, our build, probably never going to get nerfed because no one's using it. Uh, anyway, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment. I have no friends and no family. I read every single comment, okay? Don't be afraid by that subscription size. I literally have no life. I just refresh YouTube all day long. Finally, click the video on the right side of your screen. And um, if, you, if you don't, your Digby boys won't yield as much next time you log in. I'm sorry. They're just gonna, they're just gonna go on vacation and leave you.